Well, dear heart dwellers, this is about discernment. And why are we so devastated when our discernment goes awry? The need to be right is very primal. It's an urge in us, a survival urge. It's on the level of personal protection or a guarantee that our life will go on and endure. To be wrong about something is to threaten our very survival. We may not perceive that, but in truth, that's what lies beneath the surface. This is a very, very deep primal instinct. Our need to be right is equal to our need to survive unless we've totally surrendered ourselves to God's providence. Even then, we are still human, and being wrong can be unsettling at the least and threatening. The need to survive is the most primal instinct we have as human beings. It is a mental reaction akin to a physical reaction such as jumping out of the way of a speeding car. This is why it is so hard for people to yield to a differing opinion. Lord, I would really much rather that you speak about this, please. Jesus began, <clears throat> You are right. When a soul feels compromised, it defends itself. This attitude of self-defense finds its way into issues of discernment. For instance, lately one of the sisters in the community went through a crisis in discernment, something you are all too familiar with. Ouch. I can't think of anything more daunting than to find out my judgment and discernment is off. It hits me in a global way, meaning it affects every area of my life. Not like a toothache that the dentist can fix, more like a really bad emotional, mental flu. Jesus continued, And when you reach the point that you are unsure of your decisions, you fly into a panic, depending on how far-reaching the issue was. My dear, dear ones, I simply hate to resort to allowing your discernment to fail. I truly hate it. I know you feel betrayed by me because you believed I had given you that word that didn't come to pass. There are seasons of overconfidence in all of your lives, times when you skip blithely along feeling very self-confident that all is well. Here the Lord stopped me to look up the word blithely in the dictionary, and this is what it said. The adjective blithe used to mean happy and carefree, but over time it has also come to describe someone who isn't paying attention the way they should. Yeah, that hit it right on the nose. Jesus continued. This is when you get into trouble in discernment. You fall into a somewhat comfortable and secure, happy-go-lucky attitude. I'm not saying you shouldn't be happy, but a Christian can never afford to be carefree. You wear a target, and the enemy is always watching for a misstep that could lead to your downfall. My precious ones, I know well how you feel when you fail in discernment. And I am right there with you on the same page, feeling your pain, praying for your deliverance, and comforting you. I care very deeply for your peace and happiness, and I know the disastrous effect failed discernment can have in your lives. You begin to question everything you've ever done. However, it is better for you to know that there is a problem before it's too late and you act in error on what you believe to be true. Most errors in discernment come from your strong desire to have things your way. In these cases, the stronger your attachment, the less reliable your discernment is likely to be. Nonetheless, I do work with you to bring you to the truth. Lord, I remember when I was trying to discern your will for me in marriage. I just could not trust anything, not even your still small voice, because I was so needy. Jesus continued, 
and this is precisely why I teach you detachment. If all that you care about is my will, any result in discernment is acceptable. It is when you want something so badly that you tend to gloss over the truth while I am trying to get you to pay attention. Typically, you become confused, or at least that is what the demons tell you. Yet in truth, you are not confused. You are just wanting something so badly that you balk at accepting any other result. You set up an internal conflict over the issues, not even recognizing that you are avoiding the truth. I have to tell you that demons will oblige you and interfere with your discernment, even your Bible promise readings, because they recognize your unhealthy attachment to certain results and they want to exploit you to lead you in a wrong direction. And I allow this because of your strong self-will. I need you to recognize that your attitude is off. Beloved, this happens over and over again in so many different ways, even on a daily basis. This is why the relinquishing of your own will in all matters is absolutely key to your peace and happiness. The enemy is so clever. He will try to lead you astray through the hidden desires in your heart sometimes even desires you have no real waking knowledge of. This is why I send you soul friends or someone more experienced in life to help you walk in my will. And those who have been wounded by harsh or manipulative shepherds have in the past done so much damage that sensitive souls avoid laying their discernment at anyone's feet. In these cases, you must judge by the fruit. If you are in a season of discernment and you think you are in my will, but the fruit is very bad, then most likely you have been deceived. And I just want to take a break here for a second and say uh, there are times when it may look like bad fruit, but it's really opposition from the devil. So... There's another point of discernment that comes when you get opposition. You made a decision, and it was God's will, but when you move forward, you get all kinds of opposition. That's a time for you to discern again. Did I make the right choice, and I'm just getting opposition from the devil, or is the Lord trying to block me from doing something wrong? There's just no easy answer, guys. It's, it's complicated. It's difficult. And we have to be patient and have full confidence that the Lord will straighten it out. What is the fruit of your actions? Does it build up the body of Christ or cause division and scandal? I say this to you, Claire, because in your recent past you have dealt with a soul who led another soul astray and caused scandal and division in your midst. What is the fruit of this person's discernment? Is it not division and enmity? judgment and isolation from those that worked so well together in the past? This soul does not recognize what they are doing, but they are living in the fruit, and it's not good, not good from my perspective. I wanted to use them for so much more, but they refused to yield to your discernment. Rather, they have insisted on no further communication because they think they were told by me to cut off communication until you repented and agreed with them. Did I say such a thing to them? No, I did not. I hate division, pride, rebellion in my body. They walk right into the enemy's trap. I would have wished for the rebellious one to yield in a simple matter and work with the one she vowed obedience to. It is a loss of grace to ignore the one that you profess obedience to. That is not my way. My way is to work with a leader who does not agree with something, and if they're lacking in truth to understand my way, I teach them. But never do I excommunicate them from my life, nor do I teach that 
except in unusually sinful situations, which this is not. It was a difference in opinion. It was a difference in opinion and perception, and there was no cause for this to happen. This is what I mean by bad fruit. There is so much more I would like to say about discernment, my loved ones. So much. But I can sum it up in one sentence. Consider the fruit. Sometimes there is not sufficient time to judge by the fruit, although immediate repercussions can disclose much about motive and whether good or evil is working here. My precious ones, you must be so much wiser than your opponent and always suspect their intervention to twist things to their advantage. How do you recognize their advantage? Division, hurt feelings, alienation, loss, and unwillingness to work things out, especially a hasty write-off, causing a breach in brotherly love that damages many souls, not just the two of you. My way is peace. Walk in peace. Be a woman of peace. Never a catalyst for division and rejection. Now going back to the disappointing results of failed discernment. My children, do not collapse into depression because you got it wrong. Rather thank me that I intervened and prevented you from making a series of mistakes based on lies. Be willing to be wrong. Do not allow your survival instinct. Do not allow your survival instincts to recoil and fly into a panic. Understand that you are only human, and to err is human. That does not mean that all your discernment is wrong. It's like separating peas from gravel on your dinner plate. Invoke my Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me, please. If you are humble, you will receive the help you're asking for because your heart is well disposed. However, if you are proud and self-assured, looking down on those who disagree with you, you are in for a most unpleasant ride on the devil's roller coaster. Do you know the angels stand back from those who are proud when they ask for help? They are reluctant because they can see how I am using the predicament to correct you. In this case, they look to me to see if I want them to get involved. And very often I hold them back for the very same reasons. So to summarize, I'm asking you who are meek and humble of heart not to react when there's a possible error in discernment. Rather, take a very deep breath. Thank me for catching you and work with my Holy Spirit to separate truth from error. Consider your ways also. What led you into this error? Was there some attachment that you were protecting? Are you stuck in self-will? This is nothing to be ashamed of. Why? Because it's the most common source of trouble in everyone's life. But if you have chosen to travel the road of perfection, sooner or later you will have to relinquish your will to live for mine only. I love you. I care deeply for you. I hurt over this as much as you do. But I am faithful to correct the error of your ways so you may soon be in heaven with me. And in the meantime, avoid the traps the enemy has laid at your feet. I bless you now, my beloved ones, with a willing spirit to live only my will in your lives. <laughs>